Hi, it's Liz here from Tourism Tribe and very fortunate today that I have the opportunity to have a quick chat with um, Hannah Stratham. And Hannah is the owner of Media Water and Hannah is um, well known to the Tourism Tribe family because she's presented a number of workshops and particularly Hannah, one of your um, areas of expertise and what you're really well known for is your um, ability to share with people the skills and knowledge about how to tell a great story for their region and their business and the use of social media and digital marketing to do that. Um, so how are you today, Hannah? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Liz. Oh, thank you for being here. So what I wanted to chat with you about, Hannah, is I know you've been working with some businesses and helping them out with um, disaster recovery um, marketing and communications. And I wanted to know um, your thoughts about, uh, well, tell us what you've been doing um, with those businesses firstly. And out of that, I expect we'll get some tips that um, people will enjoy hearing about that you're able to share with them? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess the first thing to say is we have um, a lot of really broad spectrum of tourism clients and uh, two were directly affected and the rest haven't been affected. So I think with the disaster relief and the, um, the marketing assistance we've been providing, we've, we've got two very different sort of strains of marketing happening in the moment. We've got something for the people who were affected and we're in crisis mode. And then we've got something completely different for our other um, clients who weren't affected, but they are affected more broadly by the, the tourism market in Australia. We've seen holiday here this year. They want to be able to tap into those things, but they're a little bit scared about, you know, for want of a better word, stealing the thunder of the affected. Sure. Yeah. I guess just at the outset, just to say we have those two very different sort of hats on in, in our office at the moment. So, And I, I think that's a good point to make that the industry is sensitive to those destinations and businesses that have been directly impacted and are trying to navigate this situation. This is exactly. An awful awful you know, lot of that's still open for business and very accessible, yeah. Absolutely. And I've got clients who are worried about saying come and holiday here because they want, you know, they want people to holiday, you know, in the Grampians as an example. And they're a bit nervous about pulling tourists away into, into their area. So, yeah. so um, I guess for the, the ones that have been affected, the, where we're at at the moment with, um, with the fires is getting them um, open for business essentially. And what does that launch strategy look like? And I guess the thing that we're really working with with them at the moment is how long do we talk about the fires for? Um, because we can't talk about them forever. We need to to get back to business as usual. So with those two clients, we're on a BAU sort of path with them at the moment. So um, the most important step that we've got with them at the moment is just regular communication um, and communication with the people who are on the ground um, and with a broad spectrum. So I guess in any sort of, as you know, any sort of crisis communication team you set up or any crisis, you set up a crisis comms team of people from a broad area within the business that you can talk to and find out about how things are on the ground because it's not the marketing manager, you know, who we'd normally be dealing with. They actually don't always have the best insights as the person who's on the ground. So it's front of staff, um, the, you know, the business owner, CEO and someone, you know, from the C-suite if we've got that sort of scale of the business or it's or it's just your operations team just to find out exactly what's happening. And it doesn't matter whether that's a bushfire, we did the same process for the flooding that happened in Outback Queensland earlier this year, just pulling together a group just to find exactly what's happening because often, you know, um, the authorities can't keep up with the on-the-ground stuff because, you know, road reports and things like that change every day and just even finding, oh, no, our road's actually closed today, they're doing maintenance yeah. or whatever is yeah. this you get from that operational. So that's what we're doing um, with, with those guys who were affected is, is the BAU stuff and for our clients who weren't affected, we're now in the how do we activate the holiday here this year um, key message or key campaign from Tourism Australia and how do we bring that through their marketing plans. Sure, sure. Yeah. So for those businesses that have been directly impacted, um, 
to assuming that there's two phases. Well, not assuming there are two phases to that. You're uh, you're not in recovery, or or you you are. If you're not in recovery, it means uh, you're not quite ready to to go full throttle at welcoming people back or saying. You know. So, what would be a couple of um, things that you would work on in terms of marketing during those two different phases? Do you think? Sure. So, if you were um not quite, if, if you're not ready for welcoming for business, I think the, the most important thing is to get accurate information out there. Um, I think we could all agree there was a lot of misinformation about the bushfires that was put out there. Um, there was lots of really accurate information and the and social media and, and marketing has played an enormous role in the donations and, and the, I guess, worldwide awareness of, of the crisis. So um, the first thing to do is put really clear information out there. Don't be ambiguous. Tell honest, truthful stories about exactly what's happened. Um, this is the time for authenticity, um, not to shy away from it. Um, I think to be raw and real is really important at this time. This is not the time to, to be sugarcoating it. It's not the time to pretend nothing happened if it did. Um, but that being said, it's not the time to glorify it either. And I think it's not the time to hop on, you know, hop on a bandwagon and um, and make this out to be worse than it is because tourism is obviously incredibly important to the economy and we all have to tread. We all have a responsibility to tread a very fine line in um, making sure that the world does know that Australia is, is still open for business. So it's the honesty, look, we're closed, but the region's still open or look, we're closed, but our neighbours next door weren't touched. Yeah. It's, it's that sort of, um, that information is critical for people to be able to know exactly what the extent of the damage is. Um, yes, and that's a very supportive and collaborative approach as well. It's recognising that you're part of a regional ecosystem that where there are businesses maybe that are open and you want to encourage that visitation still to the region. Absolutely. You know, one of our clients um, was affected, but their neighbours weren't. So, for them, that's really important that it, they don't take to market, you know, the whole area is destroyed. It's, you know, we were unlucky, we got caught, but, you know, there's so much good that's come out of it. It's a time to talk about some of the positive stories and the things of the generosity, the way that Australians have come together. These are all really great messages to talk about. Um, and that's when you're in the in the crisis. I think that's that's the focus is just making sure people have the best access to information and not to pretend to be necess not to pretend to be the authority on anything that you're not you know it's really important in a time of crisis that you really stay within your lane as well so you know if you don't have an authority on the roads in your street don't talk about it if you don't know what's happening don't 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 mention it it's yeah. people to the best information um, and I think that's been handled really really well in this crisis um, People have been pointing to, you know, um, the rural fire service and and that, and organisations like that um, to get the best up to date information. So that's important um, too. Yeah. So if I am a business that is open for business, but I, you know, consumers think the whole area for five hundred kilometres around me is shut. Um, what are you saying to those businesses? Well, I say to that um, if we're going to look at social media. Um, show people, don't tell them. Um, the best way to prove this is, is fantastic imagery and we're up against um, social media feeds that are full of the same um, plumes of dark smoke, the same bright orange beaches, the same, you know, kangaroo court and a barbed wire fence. We've all seen those images. So we need. it's now our opportunity to put forward proof points that you are open for business, that the rooms are fine. And we need to be up, you need to just remember what everyone's perception is, is that they need to be holidaying in smoke-filled conditions so blue skies are going to be really important people will think that they'll be sleeping in a you know in an ash pan from a fireplace they need to see your rooms um they need to see that the wildlife is still there you've got you know we know from fires you get in and after rain you get incredible lush vegetation we need to see that and talk about it sort of starts to become a, a bit of a circle of life kind of story that we're open for business and we start to see the regrowth and that's really important um important there and I think once you've moved out of the, the honesty phase, um, it's still about being honest, but it's also about encouraging people to come and not connecting the dots too much for people because a lot, a lot of times consumers don't actually know you were affected. Um, and when you start to look, you know, we've, we've come back from the ashes, we've, you know, yeah. we've 
battle the fires. You're actually pointing out that you were people. Um, people yeah. tend to have incredibly short memories, and I'm not suggesting that the fires have by any means been forgotten. But I think as once you're in that business as usual sort of phase, yes. I like to, in a marketing plan, draw the line. Um, and we're doing this with, with our two clients now. Is they, and it was Australia Day for them. After Australia Day, that is the end. No more fire talk. No more fire talk. Mm-hmm. Because the issue is, and, and we had this with... Um, one of our, our clients is, is out back Queensland. We had this in, in the drought situation is people like to talk about the drought because it was, it was very close. And then they would say they'd make connections for people, for the customer. I remember someone taking to market one time something about people would be able to wash their hair because they use artesian water. They have no no lack of water. Yeah. yeah. I thought, don't say that because no they wouldn't have even thought about it. Thought about that. But now you've connected the dots for me and now all I can think of is the fact that I might not be able to have a shower. Yes, or so, what are the other impacts, yeah. Exactly, what are the I impacts? Can I, I can't drink the water, yeah. Exactly, I'm not thinking things through. What about my environmental impact? And, you know, I think we are moving into it. This is becoming a real trend is the the eco-conscious or sustainable traveller or the conscious traveller and I, I think that you, there's a lot of anxiety around that as well and we don't we we have a job to do is not to make people more anxious about their footprint in coming yeah yes. if, if you were affected and you, you're out of that now my biggest suggestion is to to put that line in the sand and say you know after this day we we don't talk about the bushfires anymore we need to move forward because everyone who has been affected will be in that same boat once they've been on their path to recovery and they'll draw the line yep. but you to do that for your own business yeah yeah that's great that's terrific Hannah um anything else anything bubbling in your head that you go you've seen a great example or something that um I've seen lots of incredible uh, lots of ground swells people making um you know uh raffles and um with tourism products together people inviting um communities that were affected by the bushfires to come and visit and doing you know bed swaps or if you um if your place was affected you can stay in our hotel for as long as you need and all of this like incredible generosity so I think that's that's been wonderful to see I think um now the big the big thing is how does everyone leverage these these statewide activities and or, or national activities because I think where we're moving to in the crisis um sort of I guess comms plan of of the nation is we need a, we've got the top-down approach coming so you know, we sort of started with these ground spells, which was bottom up, and now we're seeing it come down from the top. So how do we grab that? How do we leverage that? And um, how do you bring that through your marketing plans or offer deals, you know, as an example? Like if once you're through the, the bushfires and you start to move to your sales, like this is a great opportunity to do holiday here, you know, this year, and you've got a cracking deal for people to come and stay, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's another thing. How do you bring that through would be my sort of tip is to get really tactical with the current um campaign because it really lends itself to a tactical campaign yeah for sure for sure and thinking about the points in the calendar coming up so you've got your peak seasons your school holidays and easter and getting really tactical towards them so if ever there was a time to get a little bit organized this is it because you can't afford just to sit back I think you've got to be really proactive and energetic and go right I'm going after these sales because I want these bums in bed and I'm going to go out with really good campaigns and I'm going to leverage the work that Tourism Australia and my state tourism organization is doing and I'm going to use their hashtags and I'm going to use some of their imagery and I'm going to Mm. hook into that Um, and that's just it that just Dawn, this thought bubble just came in when you were saying that, Liz, is now is not the time to be complacent for anyone because we've seen um, already the the stats are, are pointing towards there'll be a decline in international visitors because of the, the news and the way it's been, the way the media has, has portrayed the bushfires internationally, which means every single region in Australia will now compete on domestic market share, whereas previously that had sort of been a, a regional thing, you know, um, regional owns the the domestic share and then you've got your big centres which will take the international. But if the big centres aren't taking international, they'll be pulling your domestic share. So everyone has to work even harder this year and that's really important um, 
They do. And I was saying to somebody um, just the other day that we can't have the attitude of it's just one big high for tourism spend. What we've got to do is go, well, how do we shift consumer spend from maybe some other things to a holiday? Yes. Absolutely. Right? That's hard. That's really hard. But if there is enough um, great content that creates a motivation for people to go to that weekend and there's this great community event on I've always wanted to go out to that town or go if that's communicated well enough because god I know myself often I just don't even know what's going on but mm. communication is really important and I think to resource it as well is important so I know um one of my um my employees was down in Adelaide for the tour down under over the weekend and she was in some bushfire affected areas of South Australia and there was just queues and queues of people at a local coffee shop because they wanted to to support oh, it. Oh, I know it. Yes. I hate but, this conversation. Pain. Yeah. And there was, you know where this is going and there's I only know where it's going. behind the machine. And so everyone's standing there you know, with $5 cash ready for a coffee wanting to support local and no one's there. So that's another really important thing that we need to factor into this is we're pushing tourists by the bucket load, hopefully into really small towns who are affected. I just really hope that they are there to, they've got the resources. The coffee shops are open, the bakeries are open, the bistro at the pub is open, whether this is a Sunday or a public holiday Monday, take the Tuesday off or the Wednesday. Don't take off the Monday public holiday and don't take the Sunday off. Yes, yes. Sorry, guys, but that's the reality. If you want people to say good things about your town, then you need to feed them and feed them a decent country yes. experience food. Yes. That's a good note to end on, I think, Hannah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but thank you so much. We know where we can reach you if we have questions for you and if you can help some other people out we'll be sure to guide them absolutely to happy to help or connect or share any ideas yeah. Yeah. that have worked haven't worked I've got lots of learnings from it so yeah very happy to share anything thank you so much for your time Hannah we will talk to you again very soon